Elon Musk has announced he's sponsoring a competition for the best carbon removal ideas with a $50 million prize for the winner. The competition will open on April 22, 2021. In this video, I will tell you all you need to know about carbon capture to get your brain going and put you on the way for the $50 million prize. During the formation of our planet, large amounts of carbon dioxide were stored in the ground and ended up in coal and oil. By burning these fossil fuels, we have released a lot of that old carbon dioxide really suddenly. It accumulates in the atmosphere and prevents our planet from giving off heat the way it used to. As a consequence, the climate changes, and it changes rapidly. The best course of action would have been to not pump that much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere to begin with. But at this point, reducing future emissions alone might no longer be the best way to proceed. We might have to find ways to actually get carbon dioxide back out of the air. Getting this done is what Elon Musk's competition is all about. The problem is, once carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere, it stays there for a long time. By natural processes alone, it would take several thousand years for atmospheric carbon dioxide levels to return to pre-industrial. And the climate reacts slowly to the sudden change in carbon dioxide, so we haven't yet seen the full impact of what we have done already. For example, there's a lot of water on our planet, and warming up this water takes time. So, even if we were to entirely stop carbon dioxide emissions today, the climate would continue to change for at least several more decades, if not centuries. It's like you elected someone out of office and now they're really pissed off, but they've got six weeks left on the job and nothing you can do about that. Globally, we are presently emitting about 40 billion tons of carbon dioxide per year. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, we'd have to get down to 20 billion tons per year to limit warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. These 1.5 degrees are what's called the Paris target. This means if we continue emitting at the same level as today, we'll have to remove 20 billion tons carbon dioxide per year. But to score in Musk's competition, you don't need a plan to remove the full 20 billion tons per year. You merely need a working carbon removal prototype that can be rigorously validated, that is, capable of removing at least one ton per day, and the carbon should stay locked up for at least 100 years. But other than that, pretty much everything goes. According to the website, the main metric for the competition is cost per ton. So, which options do we have to remove carbon dioxide and how much do they cost? The obvious thing to try is enhancing natural processes which remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. You can do that, for example, by planting trees, because trees take up carbon dioxide as they grow. They are what's called a natural carbon sink. This carbon is released again if the trees die and rot or are burnt, so planting trees alone isn't enough we'd have to permanently increase their numbers. By how much? Depends somewhat on the type of forest, but to get rid of the 20 billion tons per year, we'd have to plant about 10 million square kilometers of new forests. That's about the area of the United States and more than the entire remaining Amazon rainforest. Planting so many trees seems a bit impractical, and it isn't cheap either. The cost is about 100 US dollars per ton of carbon dioxide. So, to get rid of the 20 billion tons excess carbon dioxide, that would be a few trillion dollars per year. Trees are clearly part of the solution, but we need to do more than that. And stop burning the rainforest wouldn't hurt either. Humans, by the way, are also a natural carbon sink because we're 18% carbon. Unfortunately, burying or burning dead people returns that carbon into the environment. Indeed, a single cremation releases about 250 kilograms of carbon dioxide, which could be avoided, for example, by dumping dead people into the deep sea, where they won't rot. So, if we were to do sea burials instead of cremations, that would save up to a million tons carbon dioxide per year. 
not a terrible lot and probably quite expensive. Yeah, I'm not the person to win that prize. But there's a more efficient way that oceans could help removing carbon. If one stimulates the growth of algae, these will take up carbon. When the algae die, they sink to the bottom of the ocean, where the carbon could remain in principle for millions of years. This is called ocean fertilization. It's a good idea in theory, but in practice it's presently unclear how efficient it is. There's no good data for how many of the algae sink and how many of them get eaten, in which case the carbon might be released and no one knows what else such fertilization might do to the oceans. So a lot of research remains to be done here. It's also unclear how much it would cost. Estimates range from 2 to 450 US dollars per ton of carbon dioxide. Besides enhancing natural carbon sinks, there are a variety of technologies for removing carbon permanently. For example, if one burns agricultural waste or wood in the absence of oxygen, this will not release all the carbon dioxide, but produce a substance called biochar. The biochar keeps about half of the carbon, and not only is it stable for thousands of years, it can also improve the quality of soil. The major problem with this idea is that there's only so much agricultural waste to burn. Still, by some optimistic estimates, one could remove up to 1.8 billion tons of carbon dioxide per year this way. Cost estimates are between 30 and 120 US dollars per ton of carbon dioxide. By the way, plastic is about 80% carbon. That's because it's mostly made of oil and natural gas. And since it isn't biodegradable, it'll safely store the carbon as long as you don't burn it. So the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, that's carbon storage. Not a particularly popular one though. A more popular idea is enhanced weathering. For this, one artificially creates certain minerals that, when they come in contact with water, can bind carbon dioxide to them, thereby removing it from the air. The idea is to produce large amounts of these minerals, crush them and distribute them over large areas of land. The challenges for this method are, how do you produce large amounts of these minerals and where do you find enough land to put it on? The supporters of the American weathering project Vasta claim that the cost would be about 10 US dollars per ton of carbon dioxide. So that's a factor 10 less than planting trees. Then there is direct air capture. The most common method for this is pushing air through filters which absorb carbon dioxide. Several petrol companies like Chevron, BHP and Occidental currently explore this technology. The company Carbon Engineering, which is backed by Bill Gates, has a pilot plant in British Columbia that they want to scale up to commercial plants. They claim every such plant will be equivalent in carbon removal to 40 million trees, removing 1 million tons of carbon dioxide per year. They estimate the cost between 94 and 232 US dollars per ton. That would mean between 2 to 4 trillion US dollars per year to eliminate the entire 20 billion tons carbon dioxide which we need to get rid of. That's between 2.5 and 5% of the world's GDP. But since carbon dioxide is taken up by the oceans, one can also try to get rid of it by extracting it from seawater. Indeed, the density of carbon dioxide in seawater is about 125 times higher than it is in air. And once you've removed it, the water will take up new carbon dioxide from the air. So you can basically use the oceans to suck the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. That sounds really neat. The current cost estimate for carbon extraction from seawater is about $50 per ton. So that's about half as much as carbon extraction from air. The major challenge for this idea is that the currently known methods for extracting carbon dioxide from water require heating the water to about 70 degrees Celsius, which takes up a lot of energy. But maybe there are other, more energy efficient ways to get carbon dioxide out of water. You might be the person to solve this problem. Finally, there's carbon capture and storage, which means capturing carbon dioxide right where it's produced and storing it away before it's released into the atmosphere. About 26 commercial facilities already use this method, and a few dozen more are planned. 
In 2020, about 40 million tons of carbon dioxide were captured by this method. The typical cost is between 50 and 100 US dollars per ton of carbon dioxide, though in particularly lucky cases, the cost may go down to about $15 per ton. The major challenge here is that present technologies for carbon capture and storage require huge amounts of water. As you can see, an overall problem for these ideas is that they are expensive. You can therefore score on Musk's competition by making one of the existing technologies cheaper, or more efficient, or both, or maybe you have an entirely new idea to put forward. I wish you good luck! This video was sponsored by Brilliant, which is a website and app that offers interactive courses on a large variety of topics in science and mathematics, including chemistry. Carbon dioxide removal and storage is primarily a chemistry problem, so if you need to brush up your knowledge about chemical reactions, energy balances or molecular bonds, have a look at Brilliant's chemistry course, The Chemical Reaction. Like in all of their courses, you can check your understanding along the way by answering questions in the exercises. To support this channel and learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash Sabine and sign up for free. The first 200 subscribers using this link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching. See you next week.